Welcome back to another episode of Phenalysis. My name is Scott. I'm a scouting and strategy mentor for Team 1987 The Bronco Bots from Lee Summit North High School in Lee Summit, Missouri. For this episode of Phenalysis, we're going to be looking at the match that recently just set the world high score for unpenalized points from Israel ISR3. It was playoffs round number one, match one. We had the first seeded alliance in red, composed of 1690 Orbit, 5135 Black Unicorns, and 5990 Trigon versus the 8th seed in blue, 7845 8-bit, 3083 Artemis, and 5654 Phoenix. Let's dive in to see how this Red Alliance was able to set a new world high score. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Oshcut is a premier metal cutting service for first teams. No minimum order, options for same day turnaround, guaranteed lead times, and instant online quotes. Oshcut is offering first teams 50% off any future order up to $200 when you scan the QR code or go to funroboticsnetwork.com slash OSHCUT. Just upload a 3D model or flat pattern to get started. Starting off in Autonomous, we have both 1690 and 5990 scoring their preloaded coral onto the L4 branch. With both of them going back to the human player station, 5990 manages to score only one additional L4, but 1690, thanks to their quick speed and ground intake, is able to score three more, giving them a total of four in autonomous, and the Red Alliance as a whole having scored six L4 Coral in auto. Taking full advantage of the bonus points that are available for the autonomous period, the Red Alliance is really able to set themselves up to go for this world high score. Now, transitioning into the teleoperary period, we can see that the Red Alliance had a clear plan and finishing off those those uh, coral pieces that they collected at the end of Autonomous and then immediately start scoring algae, where we see 1690 get a piece of coral, but then take the algae that they picked up and put it onto the reef, while they then go back to the reef to score coral and 5990 scores the algae they picked up. Now, 5990 is going to get stuck on a piece of algae here that comes across to the other side, and they're going to be stuck there for a bit. So it's really even more impressive that this Red Alliance was still able to put up a world high score. While 5990 tries to free themselves, 1690 keeps scoring uh, algae, taking it off the reef and putting it into the barge so that they could take full advantage of those reef being available later. But with 5990 not being able to get themselves free, 1690 comes over, gives them just a little bump so that they could get back into this match. Now, after 5990 gets free, we sort of get this idea of how the Red Alliance is planning to tackle this challenge of the reef. We can see that they sort of split it into two different sides, with 1690 taking one side and 5990 taking the other, so they can stay out of each other's way. Now, we're going to move into one of the next points, and one of the main reasons why I think this Red Alliance was able to set this high score, and that comes to the smart play and making sure that the Red Alliance is taking maximum use of the time that they have on the field. See, 1690 already took a, an algae off the reef, but rather than going immediately score it, they drove to the next available scoring piece, which was that coral right behind them. Now, after they pick this up, they're going to go score the algae in the reef. But now, instead of having to drive all the way back to where that coral was before they picked it up, they now just only have to go back to the reef, which is a much shorter distance, meaning that they've now maximized their the drive time that they have to get to each of the various scoring elements while taking full advantage. Now, the Red Alliance is going to continue doing this with 5990 and 1690 both taking... Uh, advantage of their ground pickup to make short cycles to and from the human player station. And what we're going to see here in a minute is that's going to contrast very differently with the Blue Alliance. But just to get a better idea, right, we can see this Red Alliance, they flooded the ground in front of their human player stations with Coral. And the reason this creates such an advantage for the Red Alliance is as we'll see against the Blue Alliance, you know, the Red Alliance doesn't have to stop line up on the human player station, wait for the human player to drop the algae, or the, excuse me, the coral, into their robot, and then go. They just get to touch it, own it, pick it up, and go. Whereas we're going to see here in the Blue Alliance, you know, they're going to take have to take a little bit more time for each of their game pieces because it is going to take them some time to line up and have that human player get that coral into the robot. 
So right here we see 7845 going back to the human player station, but note that because of the algae in the way, they have to take the time to clear it off. This is what slows down a lot of robots that are sort of reliant on that human player station in order to be able to collect the coral. And so the ability for the Red Alliance to be able to take advantage of the ground pickup is big. And we can turn around and we'll see the similar thing from 780, uh, with 785, the 5654 is going to have the same thing where they sort of struggle coming back with obstacles in their way. There's a piece of algae and then a couple of pieces of coral that's going to cause them to just a little bit delay to sort of clear off or realign themselves and get the human player to drop it into the robot. So, you know, the clear contrast between the blue alliance, you know, those few seconds every cycle do add up. And I think it's one of the things that makes this red alliance so powerful. Now, one of the other things that led this red alliance to be able to score is the fact that they stayed out so late in trying to score, you know, game pieces. As we can see, with about 32 seconds left in this match, you already have two Blue Alliance robots going back to the bars to sort of start the end game, but all three red robots are in fact still trying to score more additional game pieces. So when you're able to have a quick end game, and not having to take the full 30 seconds and you're able to score more pieces, it allows you to really take full advantage of the time. And here we see with about 22 seconds left, 1690 has just placed the last coral on the last available reef post. So with about 20 seconds left, the Red Alliance has already filled all of the reef posts left on the reef, and they'll be able to take the rest of the time to get a few last second L1 scores in to really push the score even higher. As we'll see here, you know, we see both 5990 and 1690 dropping in L1 coral. But like I said, pointing out earlier, right, so you already have both blue robots in 78.45 and 56.45. They're already at the barge. They've already made their attempts at climbing. And we're just now seeing the Red Alliance in 16.90 being the first one back for them to come back to the barge and in game to try to score. And 59.90 and uh, 51.35 are both still scoring at this point. But they're really waiting till the last minute to sort of play that in game and be able to take full advantage. And he said you'll see 1590 get one last game piece or try to before they come back and park. So when we really break it down here, you know, what allowed this Red Alliance to set the world high score was smart strategic play and taking full advantage of some of the unique functions of their robot in the ground pickup to be able to maximize their their time efficiency and getting the coral and scoring it on the reef. If you want to want to watch this match in whole, uh, it's linked down in the description below. But, you know, go to the comments, let us know what you think. Do you think this is the highest end of metagame we'll see in Reefscape? Or what other new twists and turns will teams come up with in the coming weeks to push Reefscape to an even higher level? Again, my name is Scott. Thank you for watching Fun Analysis. Make sure to like, subscribe to make sure you stay up to date with all the latest content coming from Fun. Thanks and have a good one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Osh Cut is a premier metal cutting service for first teams. No minimum order, options for same day turnaround, guaranteed lead times, and instant online quotes. Osh Cut is offering first teams 50% off any future order up to $200 when you scan the QR code or go to funroboticsnetwork.com slash OSHCUT. Just upload a 3D model or flat pattern to get started. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first.